Jordan Peterson was being was being interviewed by Andrew Schultz or the or the other way around, and I saw clips of it. Um, you know, and he was like, uh, "Well, you know, the problem with minorities is they're annoying. You know, because they can be disproportionately successful. You know, even in a majority country, and everybody resents that." And Schultz goes, wait, 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 uh, "You you mean like?" That's how people perceive minorities, right? <laughs> Not how you feel about it. <laughs> yes, thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. They'd come after me for that, you know? <laughs> He's like, that's how, that's how people see them, not how you see them. <laughs> but he says, I'm plan- I'd li- I-, I plan to speak to Kanye. That's what he said. Uh. I'd like to know what's... And he's like, why? He's like... Uh, what a... <laughs> he's so gross sometimes, Jordan Peterson. Why? Wouldn't that be... What a stunt. What a stunt. <laughs> What well, is he gonna get right, Jordan out of Kanye? Pe- Give me a break. Well, because he's, he's a, a psychologist. psychologist. Give me a break. And it's now being marketed. Jordan Peterson, Kanye West therapy. Dude, <laughs> this guy is such. You think he's cloud chasing? I think he wants to be famous. Jordan so badly. Yes, uh, I. I mean, I know. Look at you going yes, off. I. Uh, yeah, yeah. We. I've always said this. Mm, I, you've always been suspicious. Why does he need a show on the daily? Why does he need a show? Does he not have enough money? Does he not have enough audience? Why can't he just put his phone on his desk and Whoa. upload to his YouTube channel anything he wants and sell ads? Why does he need a show on the Daily Wire? Um, audience, reach, resources, He has reach. Access. He not has really. all of it. He has all of it. I mean, he must, but... How much money does he need? He's a, he's a philosopher king who lives meekly in, in, in Canada with his loving Why? wife and daughter. Why are you... He doesn't live with his daughter anymore. <laughs> Why are you so suspect? They sleep in the same bed. Why are you so suspect? You just went off because because the thing, uh, him him interviewing Kanye tri- just really yeah that really that really just I fi- nails I it for me. I think that would be really fascinating. Jordan Peterson is ascendant in the culture, influential, yeah. not on Kanye's level. A psychologist who understands the mental health element of it, and he said, "Well, you know, I'd like to figure out what's going on. That's what I'd like to figure out." And oh, problem with good. geniuses is that you're a genius, and it comes with a lot of baggage. And he'd like to really understand that the fact that because Kanye is an artistic yeah. genius, you should be interested in the subject. As, as psych- you just made the f- fucking point. As a psychologist, <laughs> is it like is it healthy for your patients to be interviewed on on YouTube? He didn't like, say publicly? as a psychologist. That's my take on it. Yeah. That would be interesting because Jordan Peterson would. I know you'd find it gross because you're like, oh, look at him. Like, he, he. I don't know if he said I'm planning on it. He said yeah. I'd like to because I'd like to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And did he mean it like, like I'm trying to I'm trying to make it happen, or I'd like to? Because I'd I'd also like to. In that case, Jordan Peterson is in a position now where he can reach and talk to anybody he wants to, which is great. Why is that a bad thing, Michael? That's not a bad thing. Why is it a bad thing that he puts himself together and makes content that's valuable for the masses on a much bigger scale? You're you're getting very worked up about this. (laughs) You are much more worked up than me. I'm only matching your energy. I just don't. I don't get your suspicion. You always think there's some ulterior motive or agenda that's malicious. I think I think he's just human. He's human. Like, yeah, they, I get it. It has a look to it. He knows what the optics are. But you don't know him like I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you know that he had a segment on the Daily Wire where he had a, a, a person on sitting with him to to challenge him on everything he's gotten heat for? Who's like a friend of his who's left to the left, yeah. and basically gr- grilled him on his. Like tweets that got him in trouble yeah. on his stuff that he went after Elliot Page on, mm-hmm. on the uh, sorry, not beautiful tweet that got him banned for the fat shaming one. He had him on and he just like was grilling Jordan. Yeah. And they had a back and forth, I, you know, sponsored by the Daily Wire. It's on the thing. And they're at the Daily Wire headquarters doing it, but he has a guy on to do it. Yes, Daily Wire is trying to create a multimedia empire that combats in every sort of way and in, enter in, in, all form, in all avenues of the culture the opposing side. Of the culture, which is what it is. Woke, left, Marxist, I don't know what you want to call it. That, mm-hmm. that sort of agenda-driven stuff. We don't have alternatives to that. And they're trying to create the alternative, and he wants to be a part of it, which I think he's earned his stripes. Um, not everyone, the, you know, I think he's earned his stripes. You, you, I like to see him with his shirt off. <laughs> why? Should, he should do more content with his shirt off. I think he'd get more eyeballs. That's not, that's not. I think he should not do Not being it. blindly defensive, I'm just like, do you're you think, being blindly offensive. Do you think he has a lot of shoulder hair? No. No, um, he's like I would a, doubt a hairless. That. Mm, he might be a bit beastly. He's in Alberta. You need a lot of hair yeah. to stay warm. Yeah. Mm. Um. But Alberta. you're you're, be, you're being blindly <laughs> offensive. I'm, I don't know if I'm being blindly. Defensive. I just I just I just have this uh, gut feeling about him. You know, you will have you heard of the Sam Bankman Fried thing? No. 
You haven't heard of it? SBF? Oh, SBF fifty the the uh, SBF fifty. Yeah, they're uh, they just they just discovered this? SBF fifty five. It's coming out this summer. What and are you talking all, about? I'm very excited. You haven't heard of SBF, and you're on YouTube and and all it's, this stuff. Sam Sam Bakeman Freed. I'm probably about to know what it is, yeah. but go. About a year ago. Um, you mean FTX, the big scandal? Yeah, 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 yeah. This, oh, of course. Oh, yeah. It's all over the place. Sorry, F- FTX is was started by SBF. Okay. Sam That's Bankman why Freed. I couldn't quite get it all together. Sorry, sorry. I know who this guy is with the hair. You think Jordan Peterson is a house of cards? No, 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 no. No, I'm just saying. Well, can Are I just kidding can I just, me? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying like SBF two weeks ago was sixteen billion. pristine. He was the the poster boy, the face of crypto. There's a a, a basketball arena I think named after his company. He was they, like Larry David was in his commercials in the Super Bowl a year ago. Tom Brady, if, Island. If, if someone were to say to you three weeks ago, I don't have a good feeling about SBF, you know, they'd be like laughed out of the room. Yes. But like sometimes these gut feelings, like uh, there's something to them, and I just have a gut feeling about Jordan Peterson that there's something off about him. How many times have you been right with your gut feelings? That's right about you. Me? Yeah. In what sense? That you're a great friend <laughs> and a talented person. I'm asking you, do you have a track record or you're just full of shit? <laughs> That's a, that, now, that is a good question. <laughs> do I have a good track record for like specific people having downfalls? No. That's you a good watch call. them and you say in retrospect, oh, it makes sense. And you want to think you I have a sixth I can't sense. point to anybody. Jordan Peterson's been through ups and downs. No, and well, no, and I he's, can, no, I can say. I, I think I've I've uh, been around enough spiritual teachers to know who I'm who I'm drawn to and and who I who I'm not drawn to. And but those are people you know. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, no, no. I could I could sit I could sit in someone's class and afterwards be like, I don't like this guy. Something's up with him. I, I don't think he's coming from the right place. And 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 I can and and I tr- I very much trust that radar. You- so so with Jordan Peterson, I when when I hear him speak, part of me goes like. I, everything he's saying is great, but I wouldn't want to be his student. Hmm. That's how I feel. Well, about it. you know, okay. I listen to his stuff. I think he's great. What's suspicious? What do you think it is? You think there's something being hidden? You think that secretly it'll all fall apart? It's no, it's, the, I think it's the contradiction. He seems so thirsty for fame and fortune, and it seems to be at odds with his, um, with his like pers- persona <laughs> of uh, <laughs> Michael, he got famous at 53, 54 years old. And he's old. never been happier. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that's true. I honestly don't know. I think he's spoken he about it. He doesn't that. have to be famous now if he doesn't want to be. He has enough to live on. What's that? He has enough to live on. How much do you need not, in Alberta it's not, it's to, not, not to retire it, on? Life is not just pursuit of material wealth, it's much more than that. You're he like he's got enough to live on. Why he's not doing it for the money? But he, but he, he, he could teach like, like smallly and. Well, privately. he can't teach at Toronto anymore. And he, he could teach, to, and he closed his clinical practice. They kicked him out of the college. He had a video that blew up randomly on YouTube. He could open by, it by protesting a, a law yeah. called B- C- Bill C sixteen. Was it so college. random? Yeah, and he's been on YouTube for like fifteen, twenty years. Yeah, with classes and lectures. I'm gonna just go for it a little bit. He's been posting. His psychology classes mm-hmm. from University of Toronto, you can mm-hmm. watch them all. Since YouTube's inception, he's like an early YouTuber. Okay? And you could watch his classes. Yeah. What's the problem with his classes? No, no, no. I'm, no, go, keep going. You've been, he, and, and, and if you go back to early interviews from the 80s and 90s, there's clips of him saying the same stuff, same message. Yeah. He's had a clinical practice for many, many years, lots and lots of patients, and helped lots and lots of people. I, I guess that's bad in your estimation. <laughs> no, no, I don't no have, he's helped all these people then any... he yes was catapulted into the public spotlight fighting a bill that he really believed was evil and bad because he has a lot of expertise on the horrific atrocities of the 20th century I know. so maybe just maybe maybe you're right or maybe he really believes that us as a culture and a society are in danger of a lot of things that he sees repeating themselves from his expert knowledge of history and psychology. Yeah. Nazi Germany, he claims, is not full of monsters. It was full of ordinary people like us, and each of us have darkness in us. And now that he has this huge platform to spend this message, I believe he thinks and genuinely believes he can do a lot of good and is doing a lot of good. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are seeing what? 
I think. Tell if, me, because when you stare into he, the abyss, it stares right back. If you were to come into the studio, and after he left, you would both go like, oh. <laughs> I just wouldn't. I'm telling you, man. There's no way. I don't have that. You have that. I'm telling you, man. Something, something's up with him. Oh. I think by the end of Jordan Peterson's life, you'll be validated, or gonna, I will. I think. Uh, no, I think I will be. I, I think we're gonna find something. It'll out be about your it. first. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe. I, I, w- I wish I could say that I, that I was right about someone else in the past, but I don't think I can. And that makes me an honest person. <laughs> You can feel what you want to feel. It's just kind yeah. of based on nothing, but you have a weird gut that tells you. It's, I don't. I, not, I don't trust Sam Harris. He's a serial killer. A, I, I don't a, trust a spiritual teacher who's like so aware of how he dresses. Is there something off about? It? There's something weird about that. He's like. I mean, you see the way he he like like how much care he puts into his suits and like his mm. makeup and his hair and all that. Yeah, is that that is not the oh it's the megalomania. There's not a sensibilities of a deeply spiritual teacher. So you weren't always suspicious of him. It's only when he started putting on the uh, the I, aesthetic. I, I, I think I think it exposed his fame, exposed something, a vice, a temptation. Yeah, about him that 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 truly rose me the wrong way. Like televangelist style, is that what you mean? In that vein, I don't I, I don't think it's as calculated and and as greedy as that. Or or I, I and it has I, more. Substance. I don't think it's wrong. I, I should say I don't think it's wrong. I don't think anything he's doing is wrong. I just think it's. Um, it exposes him as something other than uh, pure in his intentions and a spiritual philosopher. Well, if you're not pure in your intentions, that's wrong. No, I I don't even know if he's aware of it. Like I I I don't I don't think I don't intentions think he, is awareness. If your inten- if your intentions aren't pure, then you're aware of what you're doing. Um, by, by the word the word Fair intention enough. means intention. It Fair means enough. you know what you're doing, and you're not you're not what you're leading on to be. I have a feeling that. If things, if things went, he he's so. What he, are you saying? Uh, if it came out that he was having an affair he, and was laundering he, money, you'd be like, I knew it. No, no. What are I, you saying? I, I would be curious. Would he be willing to give up everything for his values right now? I, I wonder if if I was writing a story you about Jordan Peterson like, yeah. and and he had to give up the money, the fame, the reputation. The influence, all of it, mm-hmm. to stay true to one one of his values, I don't think he would do it. You, I don't think he'd be able to do it. You do realize? I I don't think I think you're com- really discounting yeah. the pre Daily Wire and all this, the amount of heat and pressure and things that he lost that were valuable in his life before se- things seemed to be secure and cushy, like probably relationships, colleagues, his entire academic career his clinical practice a lot of things that are valuable to him that are more than material he had to give up Th- that that might be but he's and he's different now he's a different person now that was a few years ago but, and now he didn't he doesn't he didn't have all these but it's not a matter of security you're, you're saying he could live on what he wants would he give all up the riches and the fame like to me i think you're putting that too much on a, 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 a as as paramount mm-hmm. to what drives him in other words i don't think you know, what do you know you don't know him I'm judging him based on what I'm seeing, and you're and you're not. <laughs> I don't even I don't even watch this stuff. That's what I'm saying. You're going with a gut. I'm going with everything I've seen played I think, out. I think I think I think he's he's done what Sam Harris has done to you, where you you've lost you've lost touch with the truth because he's he's got you in his spell. Oh, I like that. That's good trolling. But um, <laughs> but I think this is well. Tro- we've already gone over this topic before. I know, I know, I know. And some of it's tongue in cheek. Um, the suits are great. He looks fantastic. He but, look. He does look great. Yeah, but you're just suspicious kind of, of the dog and pony show. Really, if he was out there looking like shit, you'd be less suspicious. If he was just in like a sweater, looking sloppy, like a like a teacher, but with all the popularity. Like, well, I'd, be, I'd be less. It's less aesthetic suspicious. to you. That's rubbing you the wrong way. It's the whole dog and pony show. It's going out in front of yeah, a massive audience. Yeah, but aesthetics are part of a, a spiritual life, and that that I don't spiritual life. Like he's 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 not just a he's a spiritual teacher. Isn't yeah, he? yeah. A spiritual, philosophical, whatever. If a rab- if a Kabbalist showed up here wearing like a gold chain and like pulled up in like an, an Escalade and had a driver, the first thing you think is bullshit. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing you think. Yeah, S- same thing. Uh, that's what's happening. Same thing. That's what's happening like, with you. Yeah, like, like I'm, we're not giving this guy any charity. I guess I'm not perceiving what you're perceiving as such flashy, crazy, fancy stuff. So the suits are nice, but yeah, the suits are nice. You know, it's 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 how, <laughs> it's how much he cares about it. 
to me. Uh, I think he cares. About, like, yeah, but it's it's not. Just to be clear, I would do what he's doing. I now. understand. You're. I understand. <laughs> I, I'm not seeing him like with a bunch of arm candy and a bunch of chicks on private jets saying, you know, clean up your room, bitches. He's not. <laughs> he's not doing that. So he just looks nice. And yes, he's on a big platform now, and they're all merging together to sort of get a. Yeah. Different set of values out into the world, which I think are actually really important to me. You know where I stand politically and stuff like that. I think it is important to have a counter narrative in which standing up for traditional, uh, some certain traditional yeah. institutions and norms like that matters. Like we, this stuff doesn't happen come out of nowhere. Where all of a sudden society starts. We're seeing a lot of unraveling of like a lot of real, like iconoclasts, like like sacred institutions that are being destroyed. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to get into it, but. I think it is damaging, and yeah. I think what he's doing is valuable in a lot of ways, especially for religiously minded folk like yourself, giving a lot of intellectual credibility to the religion to you know people who are religiously inclined but don't know how to articulate it. Andrew Schultz said to him, "What you've done that's so important is there are things that people think and feel, and they don't know how to say it or articulate it, and you've been able to do that for so many people. They feel a certain way, they think a certain way, and you've been able to." relieve them of having to put it into words for themselves because they don't know how to say what they're feeling but yeah. you've been able to say what they're feeling mm. um but yeah the three-piece suit bothers you so discount <laughs> all that shit 